They often say that three times, three times a charm. And for Stefan Diggs, this will be his third team. Previously of the Minnesota Vikings and most recently the Buffalo Bills, Stefan Diggs has been traded to the Houston Texans for a second round pick. Now, not only did the Texans get Stefan Diggs, a 2024 sixth round pick and a 2025 fifth round pick. And a lot of people are gonna say, wow, second round pick. And that second round pick isn't even for this year's draft. It is a second round pick in 2025. Talk about getting over. Now, I know a lot of the Ravens flock has chimed in. I've been watching the message boards. I've been looking at Twitter and a lot of them said, good for them. The Ravens don't need a locker room cancer. They don't need a rah-rah me-me guy. But the more that I think about it, I think that a lot of you are actually wrong. Yes, can he be a malcontent on the team? Yes, can he sometimes be a little selfish? But if you look back in the history of the NFL, what dominant wide receivers weren't divas? What dominant wide receivers did not want the ball? And if you look at teams outside of Baltimore and you look and see actually what went on in Buffalo and Minnesota, Stefan just wanted the ball because he knew that he could help his team win. Now, granted, I give it to you, he did look a little disconnected from the team this season, but I think that going back to the 2022 season, it was a bit more telling. For many, a lot thought that the Buffalo Bills were in contention for the Super Bowl in 2022, and they met up with the Cincinnati Bengals in the playoffs, and Cincinnati ran all over them. But as Buffalo was trying to get back into the game, there was this period where Buffalo used all four downs, and in all four of those downs, they did not once look or go Stephon's way. Me personally, if I were a playmaker, if I were someone of Stefan's ilk, I'd feel the same way. I may not have handled the situation the way that he handled it, but I would definitely be in my feelings. You are vying for a Super Bowl. You know that your window's closing. You know that the salary cap the next season is going to disrupt your team. So you want to win now. And you know you are a key component to the team winning. And they don't even look in your direction. And of course, Buffalo failed on all four downs. And Cincinnati smoked them. So to me, more of this may have been geared towards winning and not him getting the ball. Because Ravens fans, I need you to think about this. You say you don't want him in this locker room, and I get that. But don't think, can't say this for certain, but I don't think that Buffalo's locker room is as strong as the Baltimore Ravens. And as this organization has been holistically throughout its entirety, the team has brought in players that most have thought may have been a problem child, and we didn't have problems out of it. Because if you have strong leadership, and a solid foundation to build upon, these things won't happen. If you have players and teammates that are gonna check him, he may be a different person. Josh Allen was trying to get on his good side and be his best friend. Sometimes you don't need friends on teams, you need leaders. And I'm not saying Josh Allen isn't a leader, he just didn't want any drama. And I do believe for a fact that if Lamar had a problem with Stefan, he'd pull him aside and be like, look bro, get your stuff together. And it's just crazy to me to believe that the Ravens or the fan base, should I say, would believe that a player, no matter how outside of his mind he is, that averaged over a four year period, which included four Pro Bowls, he averaged 111 catches. That wasn't a season, that is his average. He averaged 1,343 yards a year, 1,300, nine and a half touchdowns received on average. This is not a one year stat. These are averages. And I know people said, well, look, he has a $28 million cap hit for a declining wide receiver. Who said he's in decline? Because if you look at those averages, I don't see any decline there. And look, we're not looking for Stefan to lead this team and receiving for the next five to 10 years. We're looking for somebody for at least the next year or two that can help the Ravens get over the hump. And speaking of three, the Ravens missed out on him three times. He is a player that was right in our backyard that went to the University of Maryland. When he was traded from Minnesota to Buffalo, the Ravens could have swooped in then. And just like today, the Ravens could have swooped in now. Not only would they have gotten a player that they coveted, a player that we desperately need, they would have picked up another draft pick. And we all know that EDC loves draft picks. And I'm not here to excuse any of his behavior. I'm not here to make excuses for him, but I'm here to say sometimes you need a player that can just play, regardless of outside distractions, regardless of all of these things. So what he tweets, a lot of players tweet. We don't like everything that all players put out. And for this to be the reason that a team passes up on him to me is really, really insane. 111 catches, 1,300 yards, nine touchdowns. Do you know how far the Ravens would have went with a player like that on the team this year? They may have gone undefeated. I guarantee you we could have used some of that production during the playoffs. All for a player that just wants the damn ball. And it is also befuddling to me every time a player leaves, a player we don't 
acquire or try to get, there's always something wrong with them. But all of the players that seem to be brought in, they're in the perfect situation. They're the perfect player. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. We know what kind of production Stefan's going to bring because he's done it consistently. He's done it with two different organizations and a myriad of different quarterbacks. So it's not the system. It's not the QBs. It's him. He is him. And when are the Ravens going to get off of their soapbox and start bringing in players that can help them win? I was just reading an article the other day about some of the worst draft picks in Ravens history. And one of those guys that was brought up was Hamale Correa. And the caption that they had under this was that John Harbaugh knew within the first conversation with him, within the 15 minutes of sitting down with this guy, that he was a good person and we needed to draft him. We see what happens when we draft these good guys. They can't play. Would he have caused problems on his team? We don't know. As he learned from prior situations, we don't know. And we'll never know because we refuse to go out here and acquire a talent that is a a true game changer for this team. So we'll go into the draft, maybe the third or the fifth round and draft a wide receiver and everybody's going to build him up or there's going to be this undrafted free agent that has a good preseason game and everybody's going to be like, yeah, he's him and he's going to take this team to prominence. We've done this song and dance so many times before. So why not go out there and get somebody for such a low cost as far as draft compensation is concerned? And I can bet all the money in my pocket right now that had that been a defensive back or an edge rusher, the Ravens might have looked into it a little bit more. And now let's not also forget about the Houston Texans. Nick Cesario or whatever the general manager's name is, kudos to you. I'm not saying that every team needs to operate like this, but the Houston Texans have been down for a few years and they decided, like Michael Jackson, it's time to make that change. Not only last year did they have the second pick overall, they traded up to the third pick and drafted the offensive and defensive players of the year in CJ Stroud and Will Anderson. They had a rookie head coach and exceeded expectations in year one. Not resting on their laurels, what did they do? This offseason, they traded for Joe Mixon. He brought in Daniil Hunter, the guy I personally, personally put it on the Ravens years ago. Then you make a move like this to bring in a Stephon Diggs to be your number one, even though Nico Collins went nuclear last year and Tank Dell before he got hurt was one of the leading receivers in the league. So you bring Tank back if he's fully healthy. Now you have three wide receivers. Once again, I'm not saying this is how your team should operate, but this is a team that is dedicated to winning. They're doing whatever they can to take this franchise to the next level. Whereas you have other franchises that sit there and let players depart and then sometimes just focus in on the wrong position. They found their stud in CJ Stroud and what are they doing they're building around him they're putting a team around him while he's on his rookie contract they're not just going defense 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 all right y'all do what y'all can do and let's see what happens they're putting a complete team on the field and once again I'm not saying this is how all teams should operate but sometimes you need to look at a team and say you know what god damn it I like the way you do business that's the team that's trying to win now not just trying to get by status quo and see what happens. Let's just pick up a few of these fringe guys and hope for the best. They're going out and they're acquiring players. Now, this is not mean that this is going to transcend into them winning a Super Bowl, being perennial playoff contenders, but it does say we're trying. And I guarantee you, if this does not work, they're going to go back to the drawing board next year and probably do something else. I told y'all earlier this offseason, Houston was going to be a team that you should watch out for. And they're making it evidently clear, crystal clear, that they're all about trying to win. They're all about trying to get better. And they're all about surrounding their franchise quarterback with talent. Some other teams out there, you need to take note. All right, let me know what y'all think. Comment, subscribe, all those good things. And until next time, it's your boy.